I collect plastic. For the past few years, I have been collecting most of the single-use plastic that comes through my home, from grocery bags and foams to packaging film and tape. All of this durable material has piled up into what you can see is a mountain of garbage stashed in my basement. I reuse these hard-to-recycle materials in creative ways, such as insulating my home. However, I collect all of this plastic not to be a penny-pinching hoarder, rather to reflect on my own habits around single-use plastic. We as consumers are addicted to plastic, myself included. We need these materials because many of our lifestyles depend on single-use options. Can you imagine a grocery store or e-commerce without single-use materials? Understanding these benefits, I want to become more aware of the choices I am making so that I may honor my beliefs and help alleviate the plastic waste problem. I'm an environmentalist at heart and a polymer chemist by training, so it is my responsibility to help reinvent the way we interact with single-use plastic. In particular, business-to-consumer packaging is very efficient at migrating from our societies to our environments. More than 60% of all the garbage on our coastlines is from this kind of packaging. So my work at the New Materials Institute focuses on around experiments that investigate how packaging in plastic like this may or may not be reclaimed by the Earth. We are creating new materials that are better for the environment at the end of their lives, starting at the moment we consumers throw away plastic. By the nature of their chemical stability, most plastics do not biodegrade in the environment. And in places with developing infrastructures, these materials will much more easily wind up at sea. By 2050, it is predicted that the mass of plastic in the ocean will outweigh that of fish under business-as-usual habits. Considering that almost half of the non-fiber plastic that we produce is for packaging, we have some choices to make around the materials we use. It is our task as shepherds of this blue planet to better understand what happens next to these materials, because how we live our lives influences the ecosystems we all depend on. You can easily find plastic litter now scattered across all beaches on Earth, scenic or not, rich and poor. This waste from our societies often concentrates in the guts of animals that feed where these materials accumulate. Our recent work in collaboration with the Loggerhead Marine Life Center investigated what types of plastics sea turtles were ingesting. As you can see, the global production of low-density plastics was quite comparable to what was found inside these animals, suggesting that our ecosystems must fight against our total plastic production. We depend on uh, keystone species in the ocean, so we need to reflect on our uses of plastic for this environment. What's seen here? is 155 grams of single-use plastic. Here in this box is exactly that. 155 grams worth of polyethylene, polypropylene, and a dash of polystyrene to feed our habits of single-use. As these plastic particles continually break down into smaller and smaller pieces, animals all sizes and types will consume them. Unlike the carbon in uh, digestible plastic, the carbon in this material will not biodegrade, so it will persist in our environment or in these animals, perhaps for millennia. We have an addiction to plastic, and uh, it is predicted that um, by 2050, 8.3 billion metric tons of plastic will be produced by humans, and uh, actually just about 6.3 billion of that uh, it goes to waste, and just 9% of that plastic has ever been recycled. This is our report card. For single-use plastic, why are we still using chemistry that is designed to last over a thousand years for a takeout box that is designed to perform for a thousand minutes? Our research team is asking questions like this too, so we focus on the chemistry of the plastics themselves. We are creating new materials that have shorter end of lives, 
we are creating plastics that can be eaten by microorganisms. So if we consider the common chip bag, it is constructed out of many different layers of plastic film, each with a function. Within each layer are countless strings of polymers, molecularly arranged like cooked spaghetti. Uh, and if we consider the, uh, if you remember from your chemistry courses, the uh, uh, polymers are made up of many thousands of repeating units called monomers. The composition and order of these uh, polymers play an important role in determining the high performance metrics of these plastics, such as strength or printability, oxygen or water barrier properties. So perhaps the polymer made from squares and circles is durable, but will not biodegrade. However, if we introduce different monomers into the mix, we may change their properties, including their ability to compost. You see, what we need are single-use plastics that biodegrade quickly, but will still fulfill their function. Every component in a polymer resin plays an important role in the chemistry of these plastics. My job is to help find polymer designs that life or biology prefers to metabolize or respire. We utilize a narrow chemical toolbox intentionally designing plastic resins from renewable feedstocks in efforts to decouple our society from fossil resources. We need a paradigm shift for certain packaging material. For packaging in plastic that is too lightweight, too worthless, or too complex to collect, we need to use materials that will enter a robust and proven recycling stream, the Earth's carbon cycle. Through this cycle, the carbon in the plastics themselves may be metabolized into biogas through microbial action, be it in a landfill, industrial compost, or the ocean. Cellulose, for instance, is the most abundant polymer on Earth, and it has been 100% recyclable for millions of years through Earth's carbon cycle. We are creating new materials like this that are for packaging solutions that may piggyback onto this natural way of recycling carbon. Shown here is the biodegradation profile of a new material synthesized in the lab. And in just two months, microbes may digest this carbon into, car into biogases bio like carbon dioxide. So it is completely digestible um, in industrial compost. Small microscopic organisms from bacteria to archaea and from fungi to insects prefer to consume and metabolize the carbon of certain plastics so that we won't have to clean them out of our oceans decades later. We have partnered with industry leaders who are as determined as we are to better understand how materials made on real and relevant scales may be digested by such organisms. As compostable packaging technologies are deployed in the future, it will be the role of retailers and brands to inform consumers how to responsibly dispose of compostable packaging. Together with support from the Walmart Foundation, we envision a future where multi-layer packaging like this will biodegrade at the end of its life. So how do we create packaging that has value at the end of its life? With consumer demand for compostable options growing, we may reconsider the packaging itself as a profit center instead of it being grounded as this necessary cost of delivery. Logos and marks exist today from certification bodies that test these end-of-life scenarios, so inspect your packaging more judiciously as our single-use plastics evolve. You will have some choices to make as these new packaging technologies are presented in front of you, the consumers. For packaging use today, there are some conscious decisions we can make now with our single-use habits and how we dispose of the stuff properly. I know it takes some foresight to grab those reusable bags, and I forget them too on occasion, but we have to vote with our time and our dollars to help restore our ecosystems. I know what I can do personally to keep my plastic footprint to a minimum. As the amount of garbage in our ocean continues to grow, ask yourself what small steps you may take to mitigate plastic pollution. How big would your stash of plastic be? Ask yourself, what future do you want for plastic? Thank you. <laughs>